I like Fender, you like Fender, everybody loves Leo Fender. Fender, Fender, Fender. I'm a professional writer, just so you know. Guitar Stuff with John! Welcome to another Guitar Stuff with a John. Jazz hands, yeah. So, today, we are discussing an instrument that I was actually going to save for a f another video down the road. Um, but... I'm creating as much content as I can because I know how busy the year is going to be. So I'm just plowing through a hundred things. So I can be with you every Monday night. And uh, this guitar, <laughs> early on in the channel, I reviewed a Fender instrument, uh, a red Californian guitar uh, that I just loved. I actually... I actually sold it to a soldier up in New Brunswick who wanted it really bad, or I would have never have sold it. He wanted it. And I knew it was a complete freak, and so I sold it to him, and he's super thrilled with it, of course. So last year, I was delving through the contents of a Long & McQuaid store somewhere, and I came across this guitar. This is a Fender Paramount. You can see the uh, ornate headstock. It's got some really cool purfling. Tortoiseshell pickguard. Beautiful sunburst. Mahogany back and sides, which I believe are solid. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But they. I would assume that, uh, and I shouldn't re really assume these things, but the way that companies are building guitars now for no money out of apparently solid wood is mind-boggling. Uh, I don't know how they're doing that, really, to be honest with you. I don't know how it's being done. Because for years we were told that solid wood cost more, sounded better, blah, 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 blah. You're paying us a huge premium for solid rosewood and solid mahogany and solid this and solid that. And laminate was garbage and all this other crap, right? Well, this guitar is built in Indonesia by Fender. And it is a cannon. And it's why I bought it. because, And I've kept it for over a year and I'm, I'm intending to to use this guitar to do an install of the new LR Bags hi-fi system because this guitar sounds so good I thought this is the guitar to put it in but listen to this thing dry and the E strings flopping a little tiny bit but I actually like that in my guitars I love a low action so the only way to describe it is it's all tone and not as much volume it, it, it may sound loud but it's not super loud it just has tons of tone it sounds way older than it is. Obviously, it's brand new. I've never had it on the road yet. It's got no pickup in it, but it does actually align. They come with a Fishman, but I consider that no pickup. But, uh, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful. I just love how flat and dry and warm it is.
only downside of it for me is that it has a 1 11 16th nut. But even with that, it still plays really comfortably. I got no problem getting separation of the strings down here, like not having my fingers bunch up on two or three strings when I'm trying to play an open string. What's really shocking about this was the same thing that was shocking about the red one. The price. This guitar was only about $1,200 Canadian. The same as the, the little red Californian, like $1,200 Canadian. That's like eight or 900 US. This guitar is, is beautifully made and it's been sitting here in the studio, albeit under controlled circumstances, but it hasn't moved a an iota. It's solid as a rock. So let's take a close look at it, and you'll see how beautifully it's made, even though we know it's a factory instrument. And i got to say as well, going into this, you know what I say. The law of 20% prevails, right? Other paramounts I've played weren't that good. This one just was built on a Monday, right? And uh, many of them are. So, so don't think that I'm saying that this is a one-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-lifetime freak, because it's not. It is a great guitar, and they're capable of building fantastic instruments. And even though they're factory Indonesian-made guitars, they're they're paying attention. Fender is paying attention to what their factory is doing, and that makes all the difference when you're building these guitars offshore to American spec and design, right? So let's take a closer look at this Paramount, but from Fender. I just, I love this thing. I think it's super cool. Right oh, so here we are at the headstock of this Fender Paramount. I love, if you take a look at this, it's really well done. Look at that tiny purfling around the headstock. It's got an ebony plate, this really cool torch design. The fender is in mother of pearl. We have a micarta nut, rosewood fingerboard with tiny, really well done snowflakes. Look at that one. And the purfling up the side of the fingerboard too. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a treat, right? That you just don't see many people do, but they're, they're doing it. So there's something they should be shot for putting a strap button there. I mean, there's a block of wood on the other side, but still, I hate this. Then we go to the top, and we see a really nice piece of, of probably Sitka with this cool, cool purfling here. Really cool. Look at that. It's multicolored. It's red, blue, white with a checkerboard in the, in the inside. The nice... Uh, I love this pickguard. Lots of dust on her. She's been sitting around. Ebony, bridge, micarta, plastic pins, of course. Can't fault them for that. Everybody does it. Bound in plain white plastic. Mahogany back and sides. It's not expensive mahogany. But look at the back. That's gorgeous. That is a beautiful piece of wood. Properly book matched. Gorgeous. And look at there's that there's that that purfling up the middle again here. Two pieces of it back to back. See that? See the seam right there? You see it in the white part. The end pin is just here. Purfling follows it down. Plastic heel cap. Really nice, beautifully profiled mahogany neck. A two-piecer, as you can see the seam just right there. There's a big knot in there. See, that's the kind of thing that that you get from doing from buying the Indonesian guitars. Those type of things would never get into an expensive instrument. 
It doesn't hurt the guitar in the least, but it's there. There's a knot in there. It's an actual hole. Anyhow, still, no, uh, nothing in the, no volute, just a straight flat neck. Very nice tuners. They work perfectly. They look like wave but they're not. Nickel, like a cheap nickel plating, nothing serious, right? But they work flawlessly. They hold tune perfectly. And for this money, this guitar smokes. Especially if you're just going to play it live in a band with a good pickup in it, like a K&K &K or, or a Hi-Fi or some other kind of sensor system. This thing is killer. Binding all the way down to the end. And there's our stickers. So you know what we got again here. The Fender Paramount. The PD-220E Dread 3TVS. Vintage Sunburst, I assume that. And there, I forget our rosette is more of the same binding here. I love that red, white, and blue thing. But there you go. The Fender Paramount Dreadnought in Sunburst. Smoking little guitar, man, I'm telling you. I, I'm not selling this. I love this thing. I like playing something with that name on the headstock. It makes me kind of proud. I've always been a Fender man. Some of my heroes played them back in the 60s when they were playing acoustics. With the, They used to have the, uh, like the little red one I did, it used to have the electric headstock on it, you know? Six on one side. But this is gorgeous. Well done, Fender. Thanks, boys. So there you go. There is the Fender Paramount, the top-of-the-line acoustic that they build. As far as I know, I have never seen one fancier than this. And they, these act, I, I have to mention as well that these guitars come in, in different body sizes. There's also a parlor version of this. There's different wood choices. You see them all over the place. When you see this headstock, you're looking at a Paramount. And like I said, it's the top of the line that they're doing right now, as far as I know. From a, from a company that's so well known for building electrics. We all love our Stratocasters and our Telecasters and whatnot and precision basses and blah, blah, blah. We seem to forget a lot of times that they used to build acoustics all the time. It was a huge market for them back in the 60s and the 70s. And I think it's time we started to give them credit again for, for still doing it and doing it well. So thanks to Fender for continuing a long, long tradition of building really good, cool acoustic guitars. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time on the next edition of Guitar Stuff with, with John.